Um, welcome everybody. Another Jeff Herbal Teas. Um, nice way to start a presentation. Herbal medicine is part of it um, when we're all drinking herbal teas. Um, so um, I'm Siobhan, um, as I've mentioned, and um, I've given you all one of my little cards there. Um, one of the things when you train to become a naturopath or a um, nutritionist, acupuncturist, herbalist, um, generally most people end up starting their own businesses. So um, this is another skill that you have to learn when you're when you're launching a, a naturopathic practice is promoting yourself as well. So there you go. Start it off well with the, with the business side right of the table. Um, but today we're going to look at balancing the hormones um, and how we can do that naturally. It's a very big topic. Um, hopefully we'll get a little bit of everything in it. It's kind of a little taster. You know? um, so we're going to look at the endocrine system. We're going to look at a little bit about Ay Ayurveda. People heard of Ayurveda before? Mm -hmm. People? Kind of the Indian... Um, form of traditional medicine and um, I'm also a yoga teacher so I'm very interested in Ayurveda, it kind of fits nicely together. Um, and herbal medicine, so herbal medicine is the speciality I chose when I studied at CNN. Um, I love plants and I love herbs and so I really hope that um, my enthusiasm will um, infect you all and make you all want to study herbal medicine with me. Um, before we get started, is anyone here already interested in studying herbal medicine specifically? Yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe? Maybe? A few maybes? Uh, well, hopefully, uh, there's kind of a friendly rivalry between naturopathy, or between the nutrition and then acupuncture and herbal medicine, so I'm going to try and lure you all into the herbal medicine course, <laughs> um, because I always want to have more herbalist friends. Um, although we can be friends with acupuncturists too, maybe. Um, anyway, before we get properly started, uh, as I mentioned, I'm also a yoga teacher and I do meditation classes and things like that, so I thought it might be nice to start with just a little meditation. Just so we can kind of, you know, arrive properly and get rid of any stresses we might have. So if you want to uncross your legs, you just place your feet flat on the ground and then sit up tall in your chair and then you just relax your hands onto your lap or onto the table. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. Um, otherwise, you can just look down at your knees. Um, and we'll just begin to tune in briefly. So days like today are often very outward focused, a lot of stimulus coming at us. So it's nice to remember that you always have that opportunity to check back in with yourself and see how you're feeling. And a really helpful way to do this is to bring our attention to the breath. So just maybe lengthen the breath a little bit, bringing more air into your lungs fill up through the lungs and the belly. And letting the air come out nice and slowly. And then perhaps if you're willing, you can set a little intention for the day. You only came here because you want to learn a little bit more about health. See if this is the right place for you to study. But with all the information that's going to get thrown at you, just coming back to that intention and letting yourself really get the most out of the day. Just to finish up now, we're all going to take a deep breath in together. And exhale the big sigh sound. The big <sighs> so breathing in. <sighs> I'm going to do two more of these. you'll find that everyone's okay yeah mm -hmm. cool yeah, it's just nice throughout the day it's a lot of information um i have to even remember my own open day that i came to before i studied here very well um, and it's a lot of things that kind of get thrown at you and um, a lot of new information so just remember why you're here and what you really want to take out of the day and um, hopefully we'll have a good time um so first thing um what is a naturopath um me 
I'm a naturopath. <laughs> um, but what else? Does anyone know? Anyone been to see a naturopath before? Or one person here? <laughs> um, well, that's good. So that's what you're here to learn. Um, so it's kind of, the way I like to think of it is, it's like a general practitioner, really like a GP. Um, so we kind of look at a lot of different things, nutrition and um, lifestyle advice. And then for me, I work with herbal medicine. Jason does acupuncture. We all have a lot of different tools in our toolbox that we use to kind of help our clients to get better, but not just to get better, to really thrive in their lives, to feel truly well, you know? Um, so there's these naturopathic principles that we work on, um, the Hippocrates, um, who said, first do no harm, which all doctors do this Hippocratic oath as well, um, but we really stick to Hippocrates um, as much as we can. Uh, he really is into nutrition and uh, lifestyle medicine as well from way back when. Um, and things have kind of changed a little bit now for um, the medical system. So what we do is we really we work with nature. We use the healing power of nature, and um, you could say that's why we're naturopaths or naturopaths. Some people say naturopaths, and that's okay too. Um, so what else? Doctor. The word doctor, when it translates from Latin, um, docere. I don't speak Latin. I don't know if I can pronounce it properly, but it means to teach. So another thing is in naturopaths, we're teachers. So people come in for consultations. And we don't just give them a prescription and tell them to leave. We teach them how they can change their lives. We teach them how they can feel better and look after themselves as well. So there's a whole big long list of naturopathic principles that you'll learn probably in your very first weekend um, of your naturopathic course. But um, that's kind of the general gist of it. Um, always looking at root causes. So trying to figure out um, what is causing the illness, not just covering symptoms or managing diseases. Um, really trying to get people very well. It's a wellness practice, which is great. Um, any questions? If you want any time throughout the talk, any questions, throw them my way. I'm happy to be interrupted because this is all for you in the end. Um, so here we have the endocrine system. It is, um, according to some people, um, not even really a proper system um, because now we're starting to learn you've got all these glands in our body that make up this glandular system. Um, right from the stuff in the brain, the hypothalamus, and the pineal, and the pituitary. And we've got like, our thyroid, which a lot of people are familiar with, because there's a huge amount of issues with thyroid here in Ireland. Um, we've got thymus gland, the adrenals, which is kind of a buzz one at the moment. Everyone has adrenal fatigue, so it's a really uh, it's a buzzy illness at the moment, I think. Um, or maybe that's just me being uh, insincere, because maybe it's actually that everyone's adrenals are um, at the moment from too much stress. And then we have our. Um, is it the Langerhans here, which are in the pancreas? They secrete our ins insulin and glucagon, and we've got our ovary and our, our testes, our gonads. So this is like traditionally what the endocrine system is, but now they're starting to realize that there's actually um, hormones being secreted from every part of the body. So don't even know if this is really correct anymore, but these are the main guys that we've known about for a long time. Um, and it's interesting as well, there's this wonderful book, I've got some books here that you can look at afterwards, this one called Holistic Anatomy, really nice. Um, but in the endocrine chapter, there's a nice little section that puts um, the body with all the chakras over the body with the endocrine system. So it's these kind of centers of energy that um, correspond with the glands. So maybe it is that there's hormones all over our body. They're finding out that they're being secreted from the heart. You know, they used to think the heart was just a pump. But um, you know, actually, the heart secretes oxytocin and these other atrial, um, natural peptide, hormone, all these things. Um, so there really is so much more than just it. So in our course, we'll study this for probably a weekend in biomedicine, then a weekend in our naturopathy year, and then again during like different herbs that are good for the endocrine system. So we go on for a long time about this, and we've only got an hour. So just to give you a little intro, it's a lot bigger than we thought, um, or that you know science has thought mm -hmm. in the past. Um, so the photo I brought, I brought from this book, another great book for people who are interested in herbal medicine, David Hoffman, he's a legend. Um, and it's a really nice book, it's got some nice little pictures, and um, it's got some, some good quotes and a lot about all the different herbs, so you can have a section of that that's a little bit fun, like intro bits on all the herbs. Um, but I saw this quote when I was kind of researching the presentation and <coughs> decided I wanted to share it with you. So it goes like this. The endocrine system is the tangible and exoteric expression of the activity of the vital body and its seven centers. 
The seven centres of force are to be found in the same region where the seven major glands are located, and each centre of force provides, according to the esoteric teaching, the power and the life of the corresponding gland, which is in fact its externalisation. Um, so you can come back to the presentation and have a look at any books um, if you would like. Um, so it's one of those systems, um, in David Hoffman as well, he actually says that um, by looking at the endocrine system, by fixing the things that are going a little bit awry in the endocrine system, we can actually heal so much within the rest of the body because it's our kind of control system along with the nervous system. And once we get the hormones in balance, then a lot of other things kind of fall into place as well. So it's a lot of the time it's one of those root causes that we look at um, when we're when we're looking um, at patients' case histories. How are we feeling about endocrine system? A little bit hard. Um, so um, I'm a big Disney fan. I've got some Disney. Don't mind it if you're not a fan. But anyway, stress is one of these things um, that has a huge effect on our endocrine system. So. When we're stressed, we secrete a hormone called cortisol, and when we have too much cortisol in our system, it's actually caustic. It can actually burn away at your artery walls and cause you um, maybe to have a stroke or something like that. So that's why you know heart attacks are associated with these, like you know people with steam fuming out of their ears because they're really so related. Um, so stress is a really big one. Then we've got the environment. Um, so much stuff around us um, that can have an effect that's out of our control a lot of the time. A lot of it's within our control, um, things like pesticides in our food. The, there's a kind of a category of chemicals called xenoestrogens. I don't know if people have heard of xenoestrogens before. Um, it's with like X, E, N, O, and then estrogen. And they are huge endocrine disruptors. So they can put everything out of order, from your pituitary, your thyroid, and maybe within your reproductive system. And the biggest cause of those are within commercially raised meat and dairy, um, which is huge, um, and also from plastics, um, those phthalates and the plastics. Um, one of the worst culprits is when you're like heating something that's maybe fatty like dairy in plastic because it leaches that out into the plastic. So there's all these things, so much of them. Um, and a lot of the time we can't avoid them. You can go vegan, which is cool, um, and you can get rid of the ones in meat and dairy if you don't have to, but it's an option and um, we can avoid plastic as much as we can. But then there's also all these things being sprayed around in the air, in our water. Um, so it can be hard to avoid sometimes. So the good news is, herbal medicine is really good for um, improving our detox system, for getting these things out of our systems. So that's helpful at least. Um, and then exercise. So exercise is good, right? Mostly. But sometimes too much exercise can be really bad for the endocrine system. So and again, it increases cortisol when we're kind of over-exercising, we're working out too much. Um, but then under-exercising and not being active at all kind of confuses the signals as well. So they don't, the glands don't really know what's going on because when you're constantly kind of doing a small amount of exercise, you're active, you're moving around, um, then it makes it uh, easier for the, the system to understand what's going on. Um, but over-exercise, maybe being too muscly like Hercules, um, isn't always the best option. And when you're kind of working with clients with these kind of hormonal issues, um, it's, exercise is always something we want to look at, not too much, but not too little. Um, either. So the second thing that we're gonna look at today, try and squeeze in, um, is Ayurveda. So I've got again some books up here, which are really nice, that you can have a look at during the break. This one here, Ayurveda, The Science of Life, by Dr. Vasant Lad, he's kind of, the Ayurveda legend, this guy's pretty good as well, David Crawley. Um, but they're worth checking out. This one's a really kind of basic intro. But what I love about Ayurveda, and like again, what Jason will talk about later with Chinese medicine, we studied both of them in, in college, but Ayurveda really kind of stuck with me because I kind of learned about it from yoga and things like that. So it's kind of the main one I use in my practice when it comes to kind of the energetic systems. And what's really nice about this um, course here and um, kind of a naturopathic approach to herbal medicine or to nutrition or acupuncture is that we um, we use these kind of energetic systems as well. So when we're looking at the endocrine system, we said it's kind of a whole picture. Um, and so with Ayurveda, it helps us to look again at the whole picture. But they're also very good at dividing things into categories. So we've got over here, Kata, Vata, and Pitta. Have anyone heard of these before? 
They are over here. You can see there the um, right and they're called the doshas. So um, it's basically working with the elements to understand what kind of different makeup each of us have. So some of us might have a bit more fire in us. Um, and that would be kind of a pit of person, made of fire and water. Um, then there's the kind of more um, earthy, watery people who are kapha, they're kind of um, calmer and very nurturing and caring. Um, it can be a little bit like, ah, um, sometimes, but they also like get you done, you know? Um, and then vata is made up of air and ether. Ether is kind of the, the thing that holds all of everything, like the air and everything, it's kind of that space. So they can be a little bit spacey, but they're also very creative. But of course, you know, we're all made up of all of these different things. And again, through Chinese medicine, you can look at the different elements as well and how they kind of pan into to individual mm -hmm. clients that you work with. So that's what's really nice about Ayurveda. You can look at someone with um, hypothyroidism on this side and another person with hypothyroid um, over here. And one of them could be a kapha person, so everything is sluggish and slow and not moving. And so there's a lot of stagnation, and that could be causing their issue. But then someone over here who's a pit of person with hypothyroidism, maybe they kind of burn themselves out so much that their thyroid's not really working anymore. So there's so many kind of intricacies when you're working with clients. It's just not saying, okay, you have a thyroid condition, here's your medication. Take this and you'll be all right once you keep taking the medication. So what we're really trying to do is find these systems, whatever it might be. Maybe you won't be using Ayurveda on a daily basis. In herbal medicine, we also have a kind of a Western tradition of herbal medicine that comes from the Greeks. There's more from Native Americans. But once we have this energetic system, and with acupuncture, we've got the whole background of Chinese medicine. This really gives us a kind of a big picture of how to treat the overall body, but then also how to treat that within each individual person that we see and their individual makeup. So it's whole and individual. Very nice. <laughs> um, so, one of the big things that I have taken from Ayurveda that I find very helpful, and specifically with hormones, is this idea of cycles and rhythms. I hate routine. So I quit my job and so I just in that path and do like crazy things like wizard yoga and all that sort of stuff. I hate routine. But it's actually really, really good for us. <laughs> if you didn't know. Um, I find it really hard going to bed at the same time every night and getting up at the same time every morning but it really, really is so helpful, especially when we're working with the endocrine system because they work on cycles. So, you know, if we think about our female hormonal system, that's working on a cycle, and then our kind of hormones are secreted within the body to help us sleep. You know, melatonin is secreted um, in the pineal gland to help us sleep, or the pituitary, I'm not sure. Um, but it kind of helps us to get into our rhythms. So when we have a daily rhythm that we set up onto our 